Hello everyone, welcome to another weekly market review. It is the 9th of November 2020. America has a new president. Bitcoin has made its third highest weekly close of all time. Much to talk about and much to look at. Total market cap chart, um, very nice weekly close above a significant weekly level. I have spoken about this level before. You can see the reaction once we did end up confirming this level as resistance, what kind of reaction we got. So we have closed price above it. Again, indicative of a bull market. But if we go down to a lower time frame, like the 12 hour, you can see this is not a very good shape and structure, which promises continuation. If that has to be so, this is the weekly level top of the channel it has to hold um, i did project a potential shorting opportunity on a retrace of this well done if you did catch it there is decent place and area to manage risk and i would say a confirmation once price starts flipping this weekly level plus the channel top into resistance we can start looking for downside eventual downside target remains this daily level along with the channel at 362 but this could take a while and this is something i've projected before for the altcoin market cap nothing much has changed and uh, unlike the total market cap we are not making progress in altcoins because they're losing incredible value against B btc and it is going as planned and moving as we had projected with a certain amount of consolidation uh, we had looked at a minimum time of about 150 days which would mean we are um, looking for a range and to play out some kind of a range strategy. What we need to do is build out a range. You can see a range deviation, <coughs> first target, middle of the range. We got another deviation, first target, middle of the range, second target, bottom of the range. Another deviation right here, hitting the middle of the range, coming back down, uh, range break, retest, middle of the range, top of the range. Now what we have is potentially another deviation at the top of the range. If price starts breaking below it, you do have um, a trade that opens up first to the middle of the range. You know, so uh, keep a lookout for this. If this is a range, there is potential to hit the middle of the range and possibly eventually come back and hit the bottom of the range as well. So if this is going to be ranging for a bit, it is better to take out a range play strategy for altcoin market cap. In terms of altcoins against Bitcoin, what I, what I could say is that the closest simile I can find is the potential 2015, 16, 14, 15 and 16 potential fractal playing out on a lower time frame between 19 and 20. And what we can see is that once price does end up finding a bottom, it's a pretty gradual and nice looking channel. and there is potential for price to do something similar and in terms of that what could potentially be is that we have reached pretty close to the bottom in terms of odds against btc there is one more drop to go what would be interesting for this in terms of odds against usd would be that we are looking at a potential drop in btc as well so if there is still a slight dip in odds against btc while btc is dropping as well um, that would first of all give a great buying opportunity for the long term and secondly um, it would give a bigger potential for downside for altcoins as well so this is something to keep a lookout for um, this is a very steep structure towards the downside and what price needs to do is to it needs a few days or weeks to stall this and generally you can see each time altcoins have formed a bottom against BTC there has been a significant period of time before we end up moving back up you know so this is a couple of months uh, three months this is almost five months so this is pretty rare where you get a very quick move down but this was because such a significant fundamental event which was the halving but if we are to form the kind of bottom that altcoins have been forming, there is a potential that possibility that we do range over here and bottom out. 
over the next two to three months so this is what we are looking at for odds against btc btc has got the third highest weekly close good volume and if we look at the four hour what you can see is that there is potentially what was creating a distribution structure you can look at the anchored vwap which was so high got a very strong sell off over here but the real uh, picture for bitcoin was actually if you're looking at the tape and one of these volume softwares this is where we were first looking at a potential cumulative volume delta divergence as a cbd div and you can see basically we got a higher high in price this is when bitcoin move made its move to 16000 we got a lower high on the cbd which means there was a decent amount of market sells not enough market buys up here and this is a major resistance level it was showing that this is significant what else has happened is if you look at a slightly higher time frame so you can see that the retrace that we've made we've had nowhere near as much interest by the buyers you know this is just more like a momentum or a short squeeze you know and the thing is the sentiment is matching it's very bullish sentiment up here after making a 60% move people are still just expecting a very tiny consolidation and a move out of here um, i mean bitcoin does that but only at very impulsive parts of its market cycle and currently since we are still below all time high it may be a better probability that we are not there yet but you can see again this is very distributive structure very tight and high not enough market buys selling was very strong price made a uh, higher high you can see another very strong cvd divergence right here so here is the higher high in price right here but you can see how far below prices in terms of the market buys so if you really want an edge trading bitcoin you can look at price action but you need to start looking and analyzing the volume the other logic that i had spoken about why we were going to get a potential big short squeeze was this data that we have because what happened once price was moving within this 13000 to um high 13000 range we were in this range for quite long and what you can see is day after day i mean from being a negative 3.4 million we got 171 million in shorts Bef while price had not shown any kind of uh, movement below which was a projected support level so it, this opened up the potential for a big short squeeze and this is exactly what we got because you can see around about the 2nd of november we had still 171 million shorts and we eventually totally decimated them by the time we got up in close to 16000 so this is the kind of data you need to see to analyze bitcoin and currently it's just showing me a picture of a potential move to the downside a lot of confluence here to add support to that here we're looking at the index of the bull markets for the s&p 500 uh, since world war 2 until now what we've been looking at is the simile between 2009 and basically what we've been doing currently so what you can see is that uh, currently we are pretty close to following what potentially 2009 was doing which would mean that for now we would have to kind of form a bit of a top and then move down again but this is again basically what 2009 at this point was doing was fall uh, forming a bit of a ramp which continued onwards for a decent amount of time and essentially what this would do for uh 2020 is if we can get a ramp like this without a very significant correction then this would give price enough time for the fundamentals to catch up you know so let's see if this is what a price is interested in doing because for now we have been looking at this pretty closely of course we have additional confluence um, we had uh, an anchored viva band support over here so we have additional confluence for what price needs to do so this is one perspective and 
uh, one potentiality that we should be looking at where we do end up getting a consolidation here this would align with btc weakness and mark, uh, weakness in crypto if correlation is to be there so here's one thing that we need to look at the other thing we need to look at is the seasonality so in terms of seasonality we have spoken about this plenty of times before but you know that november and december during election year specifically which is the green bar they do show strength so if it is that seasonality is what comes into play in this very unusual 2020 then we may not and break out from that fractal and continue northward but if fundamentals need to catch up with price it is potentially possible we do end up getting more subdued november and december than what we usually do here year end rallies on what is the performance during election years for the s p 500 they are common but you do have to understand that this is not a common year at all this is not how the average performance for this election year has gone so it is something we have to keep in mind outside of that for the elections you do know that i was favoring an incumbent party win all the way in october but in the last review we did end up reviewing that since the dollar did did not drop over the last three months and the s p 500 only had a very marginal positive performance of 0.5 percent over the last three months the odds of the incumbent party winning had been significantly reduced i still had my bets on that uh, in, on the incumbent party winning which means a win for trump because i had those bets very early in october where i did end up finding good odds on that for on ftx uh, either it is luckily for me or for what we did end up having a potential possibility in the middle where Trump was leading the odds. And that is when I ended up de-risking part of that, you know, though, of course, I did not take profits and I was not in the positive much, but I did not lose anything uh, considering that the, the results were dynamic as in, you know, it's not the usual elections just like we haven't had a usual year so in terms of that this is something in seasonality that we need to keep a lookout for since it has been such an unusual year we cannot say for certain that what is a uh, seasonally a great month to be risk on uh, in stocks whether it remains so or not silver had a pretty strong move while the dollar weakened as well what we can see over here is we had a lower time frame bull flag that price did break out of but also we have this very significant channel and uh, currently we are close to this confluence of channel top along with this yearly level 26.2 very significant level on silver i would say if we need to be bullish price needs to hold here you know and uh, uh, we can look for a move higher but um, in terms of resistance you can see that there are quite a few significant resistance levels on silver on the mid term time frame <laughs> just if you look at it this is this is basically the consolidation that broke market structure for silver so in terms of uh, resistance here is the significant resistance level that price needs to end up breaking above <coughs> so what potentially silver could do is move up here and either build out a longer consolidation pattern like what we are <coughs> expecting for btc or flip this resistance into support and then we can be looking at this 30 uh, big 30 dollar level on silver if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and go ahead and share it with someone else and if you have any questions about what we covered today please leave them in the comments and i will be sure to get back to you or answer them in my next video for more trading content and education go ahead and click on the video on your right thanks for watching guys and cheers